Big region game on this Friday the 13th in South Carolina. Ridge Spring Manet at Wagner Sally. Each team 3-1 in one region play. Trying to keep pace with 4-0 Willison Elko, and that's how you do it. Tyson Bettis finds Jason Robinson for a first down on the first play of the first quarter. Second quarter, Bettis takes the snap, rolls out, and keeps it for a big gain down the far sideline, keeping the drive alive. Trojans now inside the 10. Jason Robinson takes it in for the score. Trojans up early. War Eagles trying to answer. Quarterback Michael Landy finds Jeremiah Bynum for a first down but it just wasn't there tonight. As Ridge Spring Manetta wins 28 to eight over Wagner Sally, we are just getting started on Football Friday Night. Football Friday Night is powered by McDonald's, I'm loving it. Your CSRA Chevy dealers, Chevrolet, find new roads. Augusta Technical College, your leader in cybersecurity programs. Great deals on furniture. The deals are here. The deals are now. Game time, boy. Jostens, Georgia Campus Services. Celebrating moments that matter since 1897. Now, the leader in local high school football coverage. WJBF Sports brings you Football Friday Night. Well, don't let the summer-like weather fool you. It was a little bit better tonight. It's yeah. already week nine of the high school football season on Friday the 13th of October. Yeah, I don't want to seem too soft, but I was a little chilly at the live I shot know. tonight. It was, what, what some 70 degrees outside? Yeah, so comfortable. Uh, I know my Indiana family will be proud of me <laughs> for that. Well, it was a great week, and on Football Friday Night, with, we'll start with what was arguably the best matchup so far of the season in the CSRA. Yeah, we still got Jefferson County, Screven County, and Thompson, Burke County, but I think it's safe to say North Augusta South Aiken may be the CSRA's premier matchup in the Palmetto State this season. Let's get to it. 7-0, North Augusta hosting 6-1 South Aiken. Each team won its first region game, so this one huge for taking command of the region standings. Jackets ranked fourth in the state. South Aiken, fifth. These two teams started off with handshakes, but it didn't end that way. More on that in a minute. It was a defensive battle, but we start with some offense. Landon Washington into the end zone for the first points. 7-0 Jackets. Now for the defense. Cody Boynton lofts up this pass. Dewan Bell goes up and gets it for the interception. More from him. Plenty more from him in a bit later. T-Bred's trying to get on the board, but Jackets special teams blocks the field goal. Game stays at 7-0. Later in the game, Boynton back to pass, and guess who's there again? Former All-CSRA Player of the Year, Dewan Bell, who made the team as a wide receiver, but he made some great plays as a DB. He would take it to the house, but no points. There was an illegal block on the return. South Aiken gets on the board. Deshaun Kitchens into the end zone. Tie game in the third quarter. Jackets would answer. It's another keeper for Washington. Up the middle for a touchdown. It's 14 to seven. Jackets, South Aiken trying to respond. Boynton throws. Tipped ball, and it's Dewan Bell for his third interception of the game. What a ball game. North Augusta eventually runs down the clock in the fourth quarter and puts the game away. Darius Gibson waltzes in. The Jackets beat South Aiken 21-7, improving to 8-0 on the season. While the win was huge, the ending was ugly. During the postgame handshake, a brawl broke out on the field with punches thrown, players, coaches, and fans all in the scrum. The PA announcer calling for people to clear the field. A disappointing end to what was an amazing game. We'll have to see if there are any suspensions as a result of this. Yeah, you hate to see that, especially after such a, a great battle. Same region, airport at Windless Ake and Hornets desperately searching for their first win of the season. Third quarter, airport up 14-0. The Hornets defense comes up with a huge goal line stand to get the turnover. And then on the ensuing drive, Jabarik Corley breaks through a huge gain, and he's down inside airport territory. Aiken looking to battle back in this one for that first win. A couple plays later, Jeremiah Green takes it down to the one-yard line. And then it's Calvin Mathis who punches it in for the touchdown to make it a 14-6 game. But Aiken unable to complete the comeback. They fall to 0-8 on the season final score, 14-6. Let's move on to Class 3A. Big game for the Strom Thurmond Rebels at unbeaten Gilbert, who leads the region. Rebels are 1-1 one one off that loss to Swansea. We pick this one up. Gilbert's Josh Strickland hits 
Manny Bright for a 55-yard touchdown, and Gilbert led 7-0, but Strom answered right back. Jaquan Harris, quarterback keeper, he's in from 20 yards out. That tied the game. Second quarter we go now. Strickland to Gage Cease for a touchdown, and it was Gilbert who ends up winning by a touchdown. Final score, 28-21 over Strom Thurmond. Barwell continues to dominate off its state semifinal appearance a year ago. Dwayne Garrett's War Horses 7-0 tied with Bamberg atop the region standings at Allendale Fairfax tonight. Allendale punting from their own end zone. The ball essentially goes straight up, and it's recovered by Tyra Spann for a touchdown. What a wacky play. Barnwell up 7-0. Pete Elmore to TJ Moore, who fights his way for a first down on the far sideline. Next play, it's Elmore to Brandon Harvey, who takes it in for a 20-yard touchdown. Barnwell led 14-0, and they blank Allendale Fairfax 39-0 the final. Silver Bluff has found its rhythm after losing its first two games of the season. Bulldogs have won four of their past five, hosting Calhoun County this evening and getting started quickly tonight. Third play of the game. Jamal Washington on the quarterback keeper. He's gone 38-yard run, two-point conversion good, and it was 8-0 Silver Bluff. Same score still in the first. Bulldogs facing a fourth and goal. Washington looking to pass, decides to keep it. He stops short. It was 14 to nothing at halftime for Silver Bluff, and they pull away in the second half for their fifth win in their past six games. Final score, 42 to nothing. And we already showed Wagner, Sally, and Ridge Spring Mineta at the top of the show. Back to that region where Williston Elko was trying to hold down first place against North. Third quarter, it's already 46 to nothing. Blue Devils, Jarius Tobin takes the handoff for a first down. And then it's Trace Rimes, quarterback, keeper. And he's gone a 35-yard touchdown run. Kind of looked more than that. Williston Elko, 53 nothing over North tonight. McCormick hosting Dixie for first place in the region. On the line early in the game, Kadarius Garrett. Nice spin move. Picks up the first down and followed up shortly after by another nice run from Dylan Walters who takes the handoff and makes a spin into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. McCormick has the early lead. On to the second quarter. Chiefs up 6-0. They go for the onside kick. Looks like Dixie might get it, but the Chiefs, the onside kick works. McCarry and Tate gets the recovery, but just before halftime, Dixie making a long pass, but look at that interception by McCormick Salias Kennedy for the interception, and the Chiefs win 14-7 to remain undefeated in region play. All right, from Thursday night, Fox Creek playing at Great Collegiate Academy. Preds tied with Saluda atop the region. Check out this play from Fox Creek's Matthew Johnson on the keeper. Takes a good lick, but he's still going, fighting off defenders all the way down to inside the 20-yard line. I think uh, Willow gave us wrong information. That's definitely Cam Mitchell. Okay, thank, right? you, thank you for the clarification. <laughs> I think you're right. Thank you for calling them out on that, too. Then Chase Criswell punches it in from there for the touchdown. Unfortunately, that was the only score for Fox Creek as Mitchell goes down there. And it was Great Collegiate Academy who got the 27-6 win over Fox Creek in a Thursday night game. Well, what a collection of games in South Carolina tonight. We've still got a fantastic game, night live matchup between Evans and Grovetown on the way. And, of course, the rest of action in Georgia, including a big region game at Lakeside where the Panthers hosted Al Kobe in a good one. That's next on Football Friday Night. We got it! Supporting high school athletics, McDonald's, proud sponsor of football Friday night. 